Welcome to our summer devotion. We are delighted that you have joined us. Well, let us begin as we always do with some beautiful piano music. Today we're going to take a look at the biblical character Abraham. I can hardly say his name without that song, Father Abraham, running through my head. Don't worry, I'll spare you. Abraham is the first of the Genesis patriarchs and he is the progenitor of three major religious traditions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Clearly, he has lived up to the meaning of his name, which is the father of a multitude. We can find mention of Abraham in Exodus, Acts, Romans, Galatians, and Hebrews. But the primary texts that portray the story of Abraham are recorded in Genesis 11:26 through Genesis 25:11. In the beginning, we meet Abram and his wife, Sarah. God changed their names to Abraham and Sarah in chapter 17. We'll take a look at the call of Abram found in Genesis 12, verses 1 through 9. Hear now the word of God. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the ones who curse you I will curse and in all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Abram took his wife, Sarai, and his brother's son, Lot, and all the possessions that they had gathered, and the persons whom they had acquired in Haran. And they set forth to go to the land of Canaan. When they had come to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land to the place at Shechem to the Oak of Morah. As they time, at that time, the Canaanites were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built there an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there he moved on to the hill country on the east side of Bethel, and he pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and invoked the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed on by stages toward the Negeb. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Open our hearts and minds, O Lord, that we might hear from you in our time of devotion on this day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 
Three words jumped out to me in this reading of our scripture passage. Three little words that might seem insignificant, that might even be overlooked, but they speak volumes to me. And here they are. So Abram went. God makes some promises, some good promises for sure. And just like that, Abraham goes. I don't know about you, but I'm not show, so sure that I have the faith of Abraham to step out there on a promise or on the word of God. Don't get me wrong. I want to have that kind of faith, that kind of obedience. But think about it. Abraham is 75 years old, and he's being asked to leave his family, his friends, and everything he knows for a foreign land. He doesn't even know where he's going. The Lord is going to show him the place. Don't worry about the final destination. Just pack your bags and start moving. Yikes. I haven't moved one time since coming to Sarasota when my two oldest daughters were two and four years old. I came on the promise that I could stay home with my girls full time. And I had that luxury for 11 years, which was a real blessing for me and the way I'm wired as a mom. By the time our third daughter started kindergarten, I was ready to go back to work. A lot of things have changed in my family dynamic but I still haven't moved out of the house that we built 24 years ago. So Abraham's response to God's call is one that catches a bit in my chest. Perhaps by taking a look at the promises from God, I might be encouraged to start packing my bags if God asked. God is promising Abraham three things. First, God promises land, a sense of place, Second, God is promising that Abraham will be the father of a great nation. He would have so many descendants, in fact, that they would be like the stars in the sky. So many, you can't even count them all. And finally, God promises that Abraham would be a blessing to all of the families on the earth. Walter Brueggemann writes that the gifts of the promise are an index of what we all crave well-being, security, prosperity, and prominence. These gifts cannot be attained through human endeavor. In Genesis 11.30, we learn that Sarah is barren, which makes it humanly impossible for Abraham to be the father of a great nation. We quickly learn that well-being cannot be conjured by Abraham and Sarah. It can only be given by the promise maker. Promise. Promise is the recurring theme throughout the Genesis narrative. Think about the promises that you've made or others have made to you throughout your life. My tra tra track record isn't so hot. As kids, to vouch for promises, we chant, I cross my heart and hope to die, stick a needle in my eye. We make pinky promises that don't stick. As adults, we make promises to love and to cherish until death we do part, and even that doesn't always stick. Fortunately, God isn't like us. Throughout the Bible, we see time and time again how God keeps God's promises. The one promise that is woven through the Bible and honestly throughout my life is how God is always with us. It is that promise that I carry with me when I have to do hard things, or when I take a baby step out in my faith, not always sure if I heard God correctly. As we ref reflect on this great character of the Bible, who wasn't perfect by any stretch of the imagination, who made missteps and mistakes along the way, we see the greatest promise of all. God owns all the roads, and no matter where you are called to step out in faith, you never go alone. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, thank you for keeping your promises. Thank you for your ongoing presence in our lives. 
Help us to listen for your call and to have the courage to step out in faith, just like Abraham. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.